Welcome back. I want to make this video for you today because, as you know, in 2020, there was this thing that happened what made it very challenging for people to get started with their fitness plan or their fitness plan got shut down or when they got out of it, they are really struggling to get back on track with their fitness plan. And when I'm meeting with people on a weekly basis, everybody kind of has that same thought. And they're saying to themselves, you know what? I had a lot of momentum going into 2020 and then the C word happened and I really got on track and I don't know how to get back on track. And even at this point going forward, I'm experiencing more and more people that I meet with at my gym and then also with people working with people online that they have that same underlying question. Where do I start? Where do I begin? And maybe they began for themselves and they're still struggling to get back on track. And what inspired me to do this video outside of all the people that I meet and the people that I've been talking to online was from Joe. And Joe said, hey, I'm 58 years old. You know, that's been away from the gym since the C word, but I am loving what I'm seeing in your videos and can't wait to put it all to practice. Wish me luck and I wanna keep you posted as to how I'm getting back on track. Uh, Joe, I really appreciate that comment. And I wanted to put together the ultimate guide for where you need to start and what I'm hearing from people in the gym and people online. So let's get right into where we need to start. Number one is we need to start setting some very specific goals. And when I meet with people for the first time or talk to them the first time, I'll say, hey, how will you know you've had success six months from now of us working together. And I get a ton of responses. And the top goals that I hear from people are, I wanna reduce my body fat. For men, what I'm seeing when we do their body fat checks is they're over you know, 25% body fat. For women, I'm seeing them over 25% body fat. So they're wanting to get weight management back under control. The next thing is people are telling me they want to get stronger. And then the last one is they want to improve their flexibility. All right. So for weight management, with these three goals, I'm gonna give you some specific action items that you can start working on right now to make some major progress in the next 12 weeks to really start scaling up your momentum. All right, so the first and foremost thing is if you're going to reduce your body fat with that number one goal of weight management and reducing body fat is we gotta look at your diet. And at the end of the day, we wanna make sure that we're not, uh, quote, having a diet. And what I'm seeing from a lot of people and hearing from people, I'll say, what have you tried? And they'll begin to tell me things like, I've tried XYZ program, I've tried XYZ hospital program, and I'm not to throw any shade at those different things, or they've downloaded XYZ diet. The challenge with doing those things, for most people, what I'm seeing is it's not sustainable. So what you're gonna wanna do is have yourself a balanced diet. And what a balanced diet will look like is having whole foods, whole foods that are made up of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Instead of just going on a diet, you're gonna wanna find whole foods that you enjoy. What we do with our coaching clients is we give them a list of foods and we help them pick and choose which foods that they like the best and start right there. The second thing you need to really figure out is your calorie intake. And then that leads back into a lot of these quote diets is people will go into more or less what they see is a crash diet is they'll find out what their BMR is and they'll bring their calories right to that amount. And then the next thing that happens is they start slashing calories from there. The challenge with that is we start to see people when they make these radical changes, it really affects their energy. It really affects their ability to have more energy for themselves. So they want to go to the gym and train. The other challenge that I see for individuals when they're going on the quote diet and they're bringing their calories down at that level is uh, as they start exercising, they become more hungry, they're hungrier. Then they end up going off and they feel guilty and they say, ah, this is too difficult and they end up quitting altogether. So find yourself a base diet and a good calorie target. So you wanna find your BMR and eat a little bit over that BMR. And I'll get into my next point of how you're going to then start uh, adjusting your training so that way you can begin to lose that excess body fat. Once you find your calorie intake and bring it up by a couple hundred calories, eating yourself whole foods, you're gonna have more energy. You're also going to 
uh, feel full. You're going to feel satiated. You're going to feel fulfilled. So you're not going to be wanting to eat a lot of these foods you start to crave because you're, quote, crash dieting. So this is going to make more of a sustainable plan that you can do for the rest of your life. That's the whole goal of this anyway. It's, it's not you just want to lose the weight and then all of a sudden you go off this plan. And I've seen it so many times when then people end up gaining all this weight back, if not more, because they've crashed their metabolism. The next thing you want to do is start to focus on your hydration. Take your weight, multiply it by 60% and then drink that amount in ounces. So if you weigh 100 pounds, multiply it by 60% and that's just a simple number there. That would be 60 ounces. Simple math, 200 pounds. You're drinking 120 ounces a day. Now I wouldn't go right up to you know two ounces of water to a day, but I'd definitely look at increasing your water intake. It's going to help you with detoxification. It's going to help you with feeling full and it's just going to help you more with your energy levels. If you have a, a decrease in your hydration, what ends up happening is your performance ends up going down. So now that you've got your nutrition in effect, most people intuitively know like I need to start an exercise routine. Uh, where most people end up struggling is they'll go to a big box gym, they'll go to any kind of gym or they'll start their home gym or they'll do some kind of online follow along video program. The problem is, is that it's uh, too much too soon. They end up training four or five days a week or they don't know what to do specifically when they step back into the gym. So there's two areas of focus that are really easy to start implementing right now to give you some big changes in the next 12 weeks. And the number one is strength training. Strength training is going to help you build some muscle. There's a lot of studies out there that you lose between three and 8% of your muscle mass every decade over the age of 30. So strength training is gonna help you build some of that muscle back so that way you can get that boost in metabolism. I'm gonna put it up on the screen here of two different exercise routines that you can start with. And I would start with just two days a week. And the reason why you're gonna to wanna to start with two days per week is one, when people start exercising for the first time, they wanna do more multiple days per week. The challenge with that is it becomes a little bit overwhelming. So by doing two days a week, you're gonna make it really easy for you to fit this into your schedule. And then on those two days, you're also allowing your body to recover between those training sessions. The exercise we wanna focus on are your big muscle groups because they're gonna give you the most bang for your buck. So I'm gonna put it up on the screen here and how that a simple workout could be is doing a warm up. And there's some great dynamic warm ups that I have on the channel here or just focus on total body stretching exercises. So on day one of your routine, I would just pick these exercises and work through them in a circuit. So I would start out with some kind of squat variation. And I know I'm very conscious of this, you know, talking to people with our online clients and also our gym person that squats may not be the best exercise for you. And I take that into mind. So there's no perfect recommended exercise. You have to do the exercise that works best for you. Squats are great because it's a multi-joint exercises that works with multiple muscle groups. And there's different progressions that you can do with it. You can start with a wall squat and I did a whole video video series on the different squat variations. You can start with some wall sits. You can start with some TRX squats. You can start with some box squats. Very friendly squat exercises till you start building up your range of motion. So it's more joint friendly. And then also till you can build up your flexibility in that range of motion. All right, so I'd start with some squats. I would start with some kind of pressing variation. You could do some push-ups from bench. You could do some incline bench press that are very friendly for my clients over the ages of 50. because There's a lot of less stress on the shoulder. From there, we're gonna do some seated rows. It's gonna be strengthening those muscles of your back. It's gonna help you with your performance. It's also gonna help stretch out your chest. Chest. Next, you're going to move on to some single leg RDLs, a good hip hinge exercise for your hamstrings. And then the next one, you can move into some core variations. So say like a plank and then pairing that with a via. I would take those exercises and I'd work them from top to bottom in a circuit. Take as much as rest as you need in between each one of those sets. I would set three rounds for that and I would do 12 to 15 repetitions. I'd say I do that on a Monday or Tuesday give my body a day or two of rest. And then the next thing that you would want on day number two, after you do your dynamic warm up, you could do some kind of lunge variation. So you could do yourself a supported split squat. You could do a TRX reverse lunge. All those are some great squat variations. Next one would be a dumbbell row. 
Again, strengthening the big muscle groups of the back. Then you can progress to a step up. Thing, the reason why I like doing a step up is you can do different levels, different uh, adjust the different sizes of your step to one. Uh, one of the goals I hear from clients is to help with their balance, but also it's gonna take some pressure off your knees. So I start with some kind of step up, and then you can do some bicep curls, and then some tricep press downs or some tricep extensions. Again, I would do three rounds, top to bottom, repeat, take as much rest as you need between sets and do 10 to 15 repetitions. So do those twice a week. And what you will end up finding is you're going to start getting better in your range of motion, which is one of the goals that clients have, flexibility. It's going to help you with your endurance. And also, as you progress through the 12 weeks, that routine is going to get easier and easier and build your confidence to allow you to train to that third day or that fourth day in the gym to start building even more lean body mass and building up your strength. And it's very schedule friendly. The next thing that is really easy to do to help with your cardiovascular fitness in, in the beginning and to boost your metabolism, it goes back to my first point around nutrition is number one is set yourself a daily step goal. And I would get some kind of tracker. Most phones have it built into it or you can get yourself a Fitbit, Apple iWatch, Garmin, whatever. Just you've got to start tracking it and it becomes as much as brushing your teeth on a daily basis. And what that's gonna do is build up your general conditioning. It's gonna give you a boost in your calorie burns every single day. Don't poo poo your daily steps. Your daily steps is gonna make a big difference. And then they're really easy to do. So like number one, you can just look at, you know, how you can start being more active throughout the day. You can look at, okay, I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take the stairs at work. I'm gonna park a little bit further away. If you're you know, grocery shopping, you're shopping, you can take the long way. And what you'll start to do is check in during the day and see how many steps you have and know about where your steps are. You can either one, begin your day getting those steps that you may miss not from your general activity or the other thing you can do is you know, make them up at the end of the day by taking a short walk after work. And it's gonna help you with building up that cardiovascular endurance. If you've already been tracking your steps, I would take a look at how many steps you're averaging per week already. And I'd bump that up by 10 to 15%. Getting those extra steps is gonna make a difference in boosting your metabolism by 300 to 500 extra calories a day just from walking. It's really easy to recover from walking. And once you get those 10 to 12 weeks of consistent walking in, your endurance will, you'll be up, you'll build up a lot of those supporting muscles and you're able to recover from those workouts. All right, those are the, the two big things right there. The next one I would look at is just tracking your progress and staying consistent. Look up on any program online and the number one thing they're gonna say is consistency is king. So the number one thing that I see people wait to be able to stay consistent is then tracking their progress. We've already talked about your Fitbit. Another one is to get yourself some kind of digital scale to measure your body fat percentage. And you can do that on a weekly basis. So then you can start to look at, okay, I'm training twice a week, I've been managing my food really well, and I'm moving in the right direction. If you're not moving in the right direction, you can then start to make some adjustments with your nutrition. And that's usually a good telltale sign that you've made some good adjustments. If you're making good progress, it's giving, it's giving you feedback that, hey, you know, you're right on track with your fitness goals. You're right on track with your nutrition. And then um, if you're not on track, it lets you be a little bit more honest with your nutrition and the things that you need to start adjusting there. A really good way to start tracking your nutrition is just logging your food into my fitness pal. And now a lot of people say, well, tracking, it just takes so much time. It takes so much energy. Here's the thing is if you're not tracking this, I don't really consider you taking your goal seriously. And later on down the line, you're gonna see that you're not gonna have to track this forever because you're gonna, like we talked about earlier, you're gonna find out that, you know what? These are the foods you like to eat this week consistently and this is what works for you. Another nice thing about tracking with a digital scale is you're gonna start to see, okay, and this is a big one because in the beginning, you're gonna, you're gonna gain muscle, you're gonna lose body fat, and you're gonna have a recomp. And a lot of people, when they're doing this recomp, they'll get on the scale and they feel like they're failing. And what our clients are seeing when they get that digital scale, what ends up happening is they're able to see, okay, guess what? I've lost three pounds of fat. I gained three pounds of muscle. My composition is better, which leads to the next point is do some measurements. Measure your neck, measure your chest, measure your arm, your waist, your hip, your thighs. 
and you'll start to see some of your inches changing. Other one is taking photos. You can start to see a visual change about every six to seven weeks. And once you start to see these, the scale move and your body confidence changing, you start to see the pictures taken. You start to see the inches coming off in that first to 12, 10 to 12 weeks. The program doesn't become so overwhelming at it anymore and not knowing where to start, but as you're starting to make some real progress, building confidence in yourself, you're intuitively going to want to do more. The last one is start doing some fitness assessments. So when you're starting out, you're gonna keep a journal. I keep one on my phone. I have all my exercises that I, I do in there. I write down how many reps I did with what weights. So the next time that I go in the gym, I challenge myself a little bit more. So I would highly suggest with these fitness assessments, you can start to see like, you know what? In the beginning, client I'm working with right now, and when she started out, we're five weeks into it, only curl five pound dumbbells. And on the last set, she wasn't able to complete it. Now she's able to do all the sets and complete it. And on the first set, we're able to do a little bit more. So it's really important to do some fitness assessments to yourself and start tracking on how well you're improving your workout. All these little things are gonna help you stay on track and motivated to get to your goals. The last one is getting a professional assistant. The biggest thing with professional assistants is when people pay and they invest in themselves, what they end up finding out is when they pay for it, they pay attention, meaning they're gonna follow through. The other thing with professional assistants, having problem with your knees, we're able to make some adjustments with your mobility program and your resistance training program, finding exercises that work for you. The other thing with professional assistants, our clients, we give them really three things to focus on every single week. And when we focus on those three things, we reflect on them the next week and we like, okay, you've made this progress. How do you do in those three areas? And they just steadily make progress as they go. Now, the other thing is if you're not making progress, we're able to make some slight adjustments really quickly and what you'll start to see is when you start to do this, these three things for this many weeks and do this many things for the second week, third week, fourth week, by the 12th week, all those little adjustments that you've made over that period of time has made a significant improvement to where you're going. All right, so put these into action right away. Let me know down in the comments which one's made the best for you. And I want to go back and I want to thank Joe for the comment of the program that he's starting for the for yourself. You know what? Uh, this is the ultimate guide for you to get right back on track and to make some momentum in your life. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, and I look forward to seeing your comments and I'll see you in the next video.